Are you looking for secondary maths resources that you can count on? Well, here on Resource Review, we'll be evaluating three that you might like to consider. They are a CD-ROM for getting to grips with probability statistics and coordinate geometry. And you're absolutely right, but how do I know that I can't translate them? An against-the-clock mathematical game. What you need to do is you need to go through the algebra. You want to carry on? Yeah! And a graphic calculator emulator. Find out what our panel of experts think in a moment here on Resource Review. Joining me to recommend today's resources is Chris Ollie. Chris is Mathematics Education Consultant for Education Interactive. On the panel today, we have Adrian Oldno from the University of Chichester. And joining Adrian is Adam Crean, Head of Mathematics at Silesian School in Surrey. Welcome to you all. So, Chris, let's kick off then with Autograph version 3. So, can you explain to us what this resource is and why you like it? Well, it's uh, a straightforward graph plotting software. So it gives opportunities to draw functions and graphs in a variety of different uh, and interesting ways. And it's also got very sophisticated statistical um, facilities that are very supportive of uh, a range of data handling work. The latest version has got much better facilities for working with interactive whiteboards, which is a clear plus at the moment. Mm. Um, very, very fast. It works very quickly. And it deals with statistics that virtually nothing else deals with in a powerful and quick way. OK, well, thank you very much. Sounds interesting. And to chart the performance of Autograph, we visited Ackland Burley School in North London, where Assistant Head of Maths, Ella Dixon, is introducing it to her Year 7 class. And you're absolutely right, but how do I know that I can't translate them? In my lesson today with Year 7, I've been using Autograph to give me a graph background on which I've drawn shapes and I've used the, the, the software to translate the shapes with vectors to teach the children about moving 2D shapes. And there's also statistics software, so drawing statistics graphs as well as, say, line graphs. It's a very big piece of software. A lot of it is very user-friendly. OK, what would the coordinate of this point here be if I moved it three squares down. If I moved it, three squares down. Ben? Minus two, zero. Minus two, zero. Let's see if he's right. One, two, three. Minus two, zero. I found the manual very, very user-friendly up to a point, except, except when I wanted to say, how do I do this specifically? Um, I also used the online help as well, so that put me in the right direction a couple of times. One feature that I found difficult was when you add a text box to label a, a shape or put the coordinates of a point, it's not dynamic, it doesn't move with the shape, which I think is something I've been told might be coming out in the next version. I think if you want to get a value for money out of Autograph, you've got to train your staff properly and give time to train your staff properly. It's not the kind of thing you can dip into. And you have to be thinking about how to incorporate it into your schemes of work. Although I'm using it with Year 7, I think that really it's aimed towards the higher end Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5. I think the strengths of Autograph is that you've got everything in one package. You can pretty much do everything you want to do in terms of graphing and statistics. It's going to be fantastic, I think, for using for statistics GCSE coursework, for instance. Well, Chris, Ella gave us a very thorough review of Autograph there. But it does strike me that it's an expensive package that Ella pointed out would need quite a lot of time and energy to really fully get to grips with. Is that a failing of this? Is it just too much for teachers to really get into? I think there are two things. One is it is extremely powerful, and it has in the past been criticised for being over complex. But it does have an option for having a simplified interface for new users, which can be very helpful. Secondly, one very useful thing is that you can simply hit the enter key when it launches, type a formula, hit the enter key again, and a graph is drawn immediately. So at a very simple starting point, all teachers can do something with it. OK. Well, what do our panel think? Mm. Adrian, is this extremely powerful to you? Yes, it is extremely powerful. And uh, one of the major features of version 3 is it's designed to run um, 3D graphics as well. So it, 
it does reflect its, its interest in the top end of the age range. So I think that Della was probably right there, that it, it probably gears towards Key Stage 4 and post-16. Mm. And if you're looking for a simple plotter for Key Stage 3, it might not be the ideal choice. Right. OK, what about the cost? £400, I believe, for a licence. Is that a reasonable price tag? I think it's very fair and it qualifies for curriculum online, so effectively it's free currently. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's good. <laughs> Provided that's good. the Maths Department gets its share of the resources of the school. Well, let's see what Adam thinks. Yeah, I mean, in my department, we currently use a different graph plotter called Omnigraph, which is a lot simpler in terms of the interface. And I think that I would probably take a long time to get to grips with all the different things you can do. But playing around with it, it was very powerful. I enjoyed the 3D aspects that Adrian's mentioned. You know, mm. you can rotate the graph in real time. You know, it's, it is very powerful there. And I think it's worth saying that the website that supports it has got forums so people can go on and share ideas and share problems and find out ways of doing things. So there is that sort of backup to it as well. Well, thank you all very much. Some good discussion there. Now let's move on to resource number two. And this is a mathematical game called the 24 game. Chris, we've got a, a version of it here, a card game, but you're advocating the online version of this particular resource. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, well, basically, the 24 game is a game with a simple rule, which is the answer is always 24. And in the main, you get four numbers which have to be combined in some way to make 24. And this is quite a simple version of it. There are more complicated versions, is that right? Yeah, the online version Im embeds all of the different variants of the card game in that it starts with four single-digit numbers. In fact, it even starts earlier than that with, say, three or even two numbers, and you're only allowed to do, say, one operation, like add them and make a smaller number, for example. But it goes up to a situation in which you have to fill a number, uh, fill a value into a complicated algebraic expression as being one of the values that makes up the 24 with decimals and negative numbers along the way. OK, sounds quite versatile. Well, let's have a look and see how the 24 game performed in the classroom. We stayed in London and visited Queen's Park Community School, and teacher Tom Bauer was using it with his class. Do it. When you have written it down, will you raise your hand? Hand, please. Are you ready? Numbers are coming. Numbers are coming up now. Today, I've been using the 24 game to try uh, to get the whole class involved in um, factors and multiples and uh, prime numbers, and then just some basic arithmetic practice. Plus the seven. Plus the one. Plus the one. Yeah. Oh, plus the one. Yes, absolutely right. Now, 68 seconds, the rest of the room. It engages students because they have a time limit and a, an, an easy objective to meet. Because it's interactive, you get to, to, to click on the board of the numbers and it gives you praise when you get them right, um, and everybody likes that. Brilliant. Gentlemen, we've just completed it and that's cool. I would really only use it once with any, you know, with any class to introduce ideas like factors and multiples or then as a lesson starter. And I might use it for five minutes at the beginning of any lesson with almost any year group, um, particularly once you introduce the harder algebraic levels. I think it's fine you know, right up to the end of Key Stage 4. I think that uh, really its biggest strength is how easy it is. Um, it's such a simple game that, um, that it's accessible by students within minutes. Gentlemen, that is the hardest level. Um, and what you need to do is you need to go through the algebra. You want to carry on? I think it's great. Well, Chris, the resource really going down well in that class. They were having a great time. But is there a concern that because it's against the clock, you get your keen, brighter students really involving themselves and the slower students perhaps being left behind and, and not grasping it within the short time frame? I think that can be an issue, but it's the same as any other classroom management issue in that it can be solved in, in the traditional way. So, for example, the teacher could have individual whiteboards and only allows the class to proceed when everybody has put the correct answer and shown it. So it can be dealt with in the same way that you would in other circumstances. Right, OK. The other thing I wanted to pick up on, it is a game. I mean, are games in maths like that anything more than just a game? Are they really learning? 
Chris, you first. Well, because it gives you opportunities to deal with numbers in a pressured environment, you have to think through a lot of a lot of thoughts very quickly, and giving students the, the chance to do that in this sort of way can be very powerful. Right, OK. I mean, would you agree, Adam? Yes, Did the I mean, time pressure really help make this game more absolutely. than... Absolutely. I mean, it's, the game actually does my head in because I hate anything that's really to a time, like the countdown numbers game and, and this thing as well. Um, it's just the pressure is enormous. I would I'd probably use it as a card game rather than on the whiteboard, um, which is a bit unusual for me, but I think that actually having the physical cards there and the students compete, competing against each other um, could be very valuable. But I don't use it with certain groups, groups that I thought you know, really needed times tables practice or groups where they really needed something motivating. Adrian, what are your views on it? Well, I think the general point you made about games is that on the whole we want our students to be applying the skills they're learning. And whether they're applying it in some model of the outside world mm. or they're applying it in something that they find exciting, I don't think that matters. It looks a bit sugared pill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, if they're doing the maths, it's, it's a very encouraging way. And obviously, the children respond extremely well. Yes. One thing, um, it's $8, 8 US dollars per pupil if you're going to use it in the way that we saw in the film there, that can add up to quite a substantial investment. But Chris, it's still worth it in your view? Well, clearly they're having a lot of fun and it generates lots of opportunities to practice numbers in this interesting and uh, an exciting environment. And as oral mental starters, you could use it very regularly. It does what it does, it's about numbers and it gives people the opportunity to practice those routinely and regularly and develop lots of powerful number skills. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Chris's third choice of resource for us today. And it's at the front of the table here from Texas Instruments, TI SmartView. Chris, explain this resource to us. TI SmartView is a Texas graphical calculator emulator. Basically, it allows you to put the calculator onto your interactive whiteboard and operate it there. And, and what do you think teachers really gain from this? I mean, why do you like it? Well, if we had um, wireless networks and laptops for every student in the classroom, then students actually accessing interactive mathematics would be possible. If we haven't reached that stage, this provides an intermediate step. All right. Well, let's open up to the panel now. Well, Adam, you're nodding. What do you think? Yes, I'm a big fan of this product. I mean, I've, I've tried everything. You know, we've had overhead projector overlays and view screens and big posters on the board. Um, and this really does what it says. It's, it's the calculator. Not only can you see what's on the calculator screen, but you can also see the graph screen. And you can see the data the table screen as well, all at the same time. Plus, it has a key press history, so you can see every key that you're pressing. The students know what to type in. Right. So it does everything that it needs to. Fantastic. Really mm -hmm. filling a niche then. What would yeah. you say, Adrian? Yeah, I think it's a brilliant tool too. Um, it's especially good uh, on the interactive whiteboard. And no coincidence, the word smart's in there, because if it's an analog board, the kids can go up and press the buttons. Great. So it really does sort of work just like a virtual calculator. Yeah, Fantastic. it's great. Well, thank you very much. That's all we've got time for today on Resource Review. But to recap, the three resources were the Autograph 3 CD-ROM Graph Plotter from Eastman Publishing Limited and distributed by Chartwell York, the 24 game online maths game from Suntex International Inc, and TI SmartView graphic calculator emulation software. For more information about all of the resources that we've talked about today, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want to, email us, resource review at teachers.tv. All that remains for me to do is to say a very big thank you to the panel, to Chris, to Adrian and to Adam. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye.